as Joel McCower here at COP21 in the Blue Zone with Bill Weil, the uh, Director of Sustainability and the Sustainability <laughs> Guru. <laughs> you go by uh, both names. Either, at, either works, both at, work. At Facebook, the social network. Uh, Bill, why is Facebook at COP? Well, it's Paris. So you got to come to Paris. Um, but a little more seriously, we use a lot of energy. We care about climate change. We care about being responsible in our own operations. And we think the world needs to act as a whole. And this is where that's happening. And we really wanted to come and be one of many companies that are here representing the business voice that is saying, we need to act as a society. We need uh, more policy certainty so that we can do what we want to do and that other businesses can do what they want to do around driving renewable energy and things like that. So we're, we're here to help raise the business voice. Yeah, one of the things you've been talking about is is you know, buying renewables and stepping up and scaling renewables. Uh, how do you see the conversation around corporate uh, use of, uh, of renewables changed and uh, how is it different now than it was even a year or two ago? Two years ago, or you know, certainly three years ago, there, every year there were one to 200 megawatts of contracts being inked around uh, buying commitments to buy renewable energy. Um, starting about two years ago, that started to change, and it went up to several hundred megawatts. And last year, I think it was a megawatt or a megawatt and a half. This year, we're going to be at two and a half or three. Gigawatts. So, gigawatts, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, the units do matter. Yeah. Um, and so the momentum, I mean, it's just, it's, it's ramping incredibly fast. More companies are doing it. It's still not a huge number of companies signing contracts, but I think there are probably a dozen or maybe even two dozen this year. Um, there are a few like Google that are, Google just announced, I think, an 800 or 900 megawatt commitment, um, which is a big chunk of what we're going to have this year. Um, but there, there are a bunch of the rest of us that aren't quite at Google scale yet, but that are doing a couple hundred megawatts at, at a time. Um, and I think the, the momentum there is growing incredibly fast, partly because costs have come down, partly because of efforts like the, the broad coalition that we've been part of, of pulling together of now 60 or 80 companies um, working together to teach each other how to do these things because these contracts aren't simple, um, and to try to change policies so we actually have options uh, to actually buy clean energy in places where today there are no options. Well, speaking of policy, uh, what are you hoping for at COP from the, in the negotiations that would facilitate this even faster uptake of renewables? You know, I'm not sure actually that, that in the short term that, that whatever that is agreed to here will change that. It's happening, right? There is momentum. Um, companies are getting on board and basically saying, look, we're going to go do this stuff. Policy can make it easier. Policy can certainly make it cheaper because I think that while wind and solar have come down a lot in, in price, um, there are places where they're still not quite cost competitive and I think we need policies to help um, get them over that hump a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but I think what we need as a society is for countries to agree that we're going to move and we're going to start to move quickly and that we're going to reevaluate where we are every few years and then you know my guess is we'll need to move faster but you know hey if we get surprised and we don't need to move as fast because things are going better than we thought then maybe we things slow down yeah. but I, I think that what we need is some real agreement that then countries will go put policies in place that will provide more certainty yeah. so Facebook now has what a billion and a half or what's the what's the uh, over a billion users a day unique people on Facebook and over a billion and a half a month yeah a million billion and a half a month and we talked back a few years ago just about the time yeah, about three hit, years ago by yeah. the time you hit a billion about uh, how are we going to deploy that what how does Facebook want to leverage that incredible incredible probably the largest I guess it is the largest, certainly, social network. Right. One of the largest like, audiences in the largest world. Largest community. Largest community. Yep. Uh, you know, to participate more fully in climate and, and other sustainability right. issues. Uh, you, we talked about some ideas back then. How's that been going, and what do you see happening come, going forward? We've experimented, or really, I should say, you know, partners, people who were doing stuff on Facebook have experimented with a lot of stuff. Um, some of it, I think, has been interesting to experiment, but it hasn't gone very far. But at the same time, I think there have been a number of things that have done really, really well. Every major environmental organization uses Facebook all the time to drive engagement, to drive, to, to inform people, um, to activate people, to sign petitions, to come out to marches. There were 700,000 people marching last weekend. There would have been probably double that if there actually had been a march in Paris. Um, a year plus ago, there were 400,000 people in New York. Um, and Facebook was a huge part of getting those people but, out. Uh, are you actually actively doing something there, or are they just using the platform? They're using the, the platform, and in some cases, we are advising them on how to do it well. 
Um, I think that's something we've been doing a lot more the last couple of years is we've got the staff now to really support organizations on all issues, on all sides of issues, um, to use our platform well. Um, and so that, that I think is the, we, we have to be a neutral platform. Right. Um, we, you know, that's not our voice. People don't come to Facebook to hear our voice. They come to connect with the people they care about, the organizations they care about. Um, but we can help people use it well. And do you think there'll be more tools and other things coming out of this, or are you still experimenting? I, my hope is that we've learned some things in the last few months as with some of the organizations we've been helping that actually will lead to tools that help then cause-based organizations um, do a better job of engaging people and targeting people and so on. Um, we need to, you know, once the dust settles from COP, we need to go back and kind of digest everything that's happened and then figure out what that would look like. But yeah, I think there'll be tools that, that make it a more useful platform for organizations, but also in the end it's got to be something that, that the people who are using it enjoy, right? They don't want to be assaulted by information from organizations they don't want to see. So it's got to be something that works for, for everybody. Hit that, hit that like button. Yep. Exactly. Great. exactly. Well, great. Thanks so much, uh, Bill Wiles, uh, Facebook sustainability guru. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Joel.